Hi everyone, it's Thursday, September 10th, 2015, and Ricky and I would like to do a little product review with you um, because of some of the changes we've been making. And as we make these changes, I think it's good not only for myself to keep a diary of it, but to update you and let you know what's working for me and may, what may or may not work for yourself. So, without further ado, let's talk. Ugh. Hi, this is going to be difficult within my lap, but I'm going to try. So this week we did away with dairy, and I think um, one of the things we talked about was that we weren't going to have cheese, um, and we weren't going to have milk, and that's really hard for me because I'm a huge cheese lover, so we went ahead and substituted those with the veggie cheese, and it's actually pretty good, so that's been working out really great. Um, but the other thing that I have been thinking about is the fact that I absolutely positively love ice cream and how am I going to be able to have ice cream and not have the dairy in it. So for me, um, coconut milk ice cream really works good for me and if you can find soy ice cream even better, but coconut milk ice cream is really good. Um, I went to my local um, Sprouts Farmer's Market today and got two different kinds. And they were having a buy one, get one, so I went ahead and got two pints. And the ones I got was the um, gluten-free cookie dough coconut milk. Gluten-free. I like how everything with this uh, company, because I've used them before. Um, obviously, it's dairy-free because it's coconut milk. I've used them for They're really good about labeling everything and making sure that if you are a person who has allergies, you can definitely have the products. With the cookie dough, I can definitely taste coconut milk in it. A little different. It doesn't have big, huge chunks of cookie dough like you do with your normal ice creams, but it's still absolutely delicious and gives you what you want. Um, seeing that it's non-dairy, the chocolate that is in it is going to be um, made with coconut milk or some other way of making it so that you don't have it. So it's really good. It has um, 26 carbs for half a pint. Normally in most of my um, ice cream that I've been having, I think it has like 40. There's no way I can eat half a pint. I usually eat like five or six scoops of, not scoops, but spoons full of ice cream and then I'm good for a little while. So there's that one. And then the other one I got was let me get the, it's still frozen. <laughs> a same company, soy delicious, dairy free, coconut milk, no sugar added vanilla bean. The vanilla bean, it was really hard for me to taste the coconut milk. Um, also very delicious. Like I said, look, all over the label, no sugar added, so you don't have to worry about um, having a ton of sugar with it. This one is only 18 grams of carbohydrates, one sugar in the entire thing. As opposed to most places, yeah, this is 16 sugars, um, and then this is one, and it's only 8 grams of fat. This one was 9. So, if you have a chance, you can get, um, sometimes you can find them in your local grocery store. You're definitely going to be able to find them in Sprouts. You, for sure, should be able to find them in um, Whole Foods. I don't know about Trader Joe's. I haven't been by Trader Joe's in like over a couple months, and I normally don't go to their ice cream section, but that's something you should check out if you're deciding to eliminate dairy from your diet, or if you are somebody who's lactose sensitive, and you're looking for an alternative, or you're just deciding, hey, I need to cut out a whole bunch of sugar from my diet, what is my alternative? I still want to have my ice cream. So that's something we investigated. Um, the other thing that I have been investigating is the fact that Okay, oh my god, what do you think about your cutting out <clears throat> dairy and milk? You're not going to be able to have chocolate. So you start to freak out, oh my god, I can't have chocolate, because, you know, we all like chocolate, what do you do? So what I did is I looked up last night um, some recipes on how to make vegan chocolate. Vegan chocolate obviously is not going to have the dairy in it. Um, it's going to have less sugar. It's going to be healthier for you. And it's going to be more cost effective in the long term. Now, in the short term, as far as when you buy the products for it, it's going to be a little bit more expensive because what you're going to have to do 
is by um, stuff pretty much of bulk, right? You can't buy like little thing coconut oil, you have to buy a big one. The one I made last night was raw chocolate, and it is made with coconut oil. Coconut oil seems to be the big thing right now. You can use it on your skin, you can use your hair, you can use it to cook um, for baking, you can use it for frying. It has a 350 degree melting temperature. Um, sorry, 350 degrees is on here somewhere. Uh, I never read it. Um, frying in temperatures up to 350 degrees, that's what I meant. Um, so you use a place of shortening butter, margarine, and other cooking oils for baking or frying in a temperature up to 350. You don't even have to refrigerate it. You just put it out on your counter. Now, I will tell you this, that when you get this, it's going to be, for some reason, I don't think it's that hot in my apartment, but um, it's going to be in a very solid white state. So when you have to cook with it, you have to boil it so you can melt it, and then you measure it off to however you want it, and then I couldn't measure it off right, so I just, whatever was left over, I just poured it back in there, and it worked perfectly fine. Um, this one I got from my Walgreens, because your uh, pharmacy should carry this also, in case you can't find it anywhere. Um, and this cost me $12, but this is going to last me quite a bit. And your regular grocery store will have it. They should have it in their oil section at the grocery store. This was in the vitamin section at my Walgreens. So that went in there. Um, Hershey, you can buy a different brand, but this is the brand I got. Hershey's cacao, one herb syrup cacao, natural unsweetened. So you want the unsweetened cacao. You're not looking for cocoa powder. Um, this is good for baking. And then I think that was like by box. And then I got this one from uh, the honey that was in the recipe. I got this one from Sprouts, and I think I spent $8 on it. But this has lasted me like uh, four or five months now. But I've been baking a lot. That's the reason why it's all the way down. Like, I've been baking cupcakes and stuff. So use, like, you know, if they say, like, three tablespoons or half a cup or whatever, you're going to use quite a bit of it. So it's raw and unfiltered. You want raw honey when you make this. You do not want um, refined honey that has all the extra additives to it. So in this recipe... In this recipe, you put a quarter cup of coconut oil, it has to be melted, two-thirds cups cacao powder, um, four tablespoons raw honey or coconut nectar or maple syrup, whichever one you have. I just have to have raw honey. I prefer raw honey over maple syrup. Maple syrup is too sweet for me, I think. And then you... Mix that all up, and then you take a baking sheet, and you literally just take down a piece of parchment paper so it doesn't stick to the baking sheet, and you lay it out in a little layer, and then you put that in your free refrigerator for like an hour, hour and a half, and then it hardens up. And then you can use a knife um, or a fork, or what I did is I broke it up with my fingers, and it made um, like, that recipe was like one and a half bags of sandwich bags, your average sandwich bag, and it was like all bunched up, so it was quite a bit of chocolate. Now, that particular recipe pretty much makes baker's chocolate, and baker's chocolate is very bitter, but I'm sorry, if it's that time of the month, I don't care what kind of chocolate I'm having as long as I'm having it. Now, there are some other recipes, and I'm going to try it because um, it's basically the same recipe that I did last night except um, it's two tablespoons of honey and five drops of stevia. Now, where do you get stevia at? Most of the times your regular grocery store is not going to carry it. You have to go to a health food store. Um, the health food store is going to have anything. They can have vanilla stevia. They can have almond stevia. They can have whatever flavor of stevia you can think of. They're probably going to have it. And then when you do those drops, because it's very concentrating, um, <clears throat> that's what flavor your item is going to have. So that's what we're going to bake next. Um, I should be baking that next week.
hopefully by then my chocolate will be gone. If not, oh well, it's in the fridge. Um, I don't want to keep it out of the fridge because I don't want it to get all uh, weird. So, um, yeah, it should be really, really good. So that's where we're at with this. Um, life is kind of good right now. I got the news today that the class that I was supposed to start for school is not going to start for another two weeks. Sort of kind of bummed, sort of kind of happy. Um, means if I do not start today, I will not graduate for 10 weeks instead of eight. However, that gives me a two week break and I haven't had a break from school in well over a year now. So can't really complain. So just thought I'd bring those to you guys. Um, my recommendation as far as if you're on this whole healthy kit and you're trying to get things that work for you, as you're starting to get these recipes and they are working, do yourself a favor, get yourself a cookbook. If you have really great handwriting, awesome. If you don't like I do, then print out the recipes, glue that into the book, keep yourself a running log. You can always reference it back later and it's something that you're going to have for a lifetime. So hope you're having a good day and that the weekend will be even better and I'll talk to you soon. Have a great one.